disciples but had great expectation while they were walking with Jesus. They were asking whether uh, they would get a seat in the left side or whether in the right side. So these words makes them so sad. So in chapter 14 verses 1 we can see that Jesus is staying, saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. In this portion we can see Jesus is assuring them of the Holy Spirit that is, that is coming and promising the Spirit the, that the Spirit will guide them into the truth and empower to testify about Him. Jesus uh, here speaks about the Spirit's role in convicting the world of sin, righteousness and judgment and how the Spirit will glorify Jesus by revealing what is to come. As we contemplate on the Pentecost, we can see that it is a fundamental even in Christian narrative. Pentecost is a moment that heralds the transformative arrival of the Holy Spirit. We can see that Pentecost is not just a historical occurrence, but a timeless testament on the ongoing renewal and transformative power of the Holy Spirit within the fabric of creation. It marks the infusion of divine energy into the human experience, a catalyst for spiritual awakening, revival, and in the renaissance of hearts and communities. In John chapter 16, verses 1 to 16, 1 to 15, Jesus foretells the advent of the Holy Spirit, painting a portrait of a counselor who guide, convict, and empower the people. His words illuminate the imminent arrival of, of a force that will not, not only indwell believers, but also serve as a catalyst for a change or for a transformation or a renewal that spans beyond individual hearts to embrace the entirety of creation. This Bible portion in ways invites us to explore the depth and breadth of Pentecost, a moment when the Spirit, like a rushing wind, poured in the hearts of believers, birthing a moment that transcends borders, cultures, and time itself. As we delve into the transformative power of Pentecost, Holy Spirit, a force that only renews but also invites us to participate in the ongoing restoration of a world in need. Let us embrace the Holy Spirit renewing work, allowing its transformative influence to fill our lives, communities, and the entirety of creation. Here, I am sharing with you three themes that we can derive from this Bible portion. First one, the Holy Spirit that leads us into new convictions. The Holy Spirit that leads us into new convictions. Nava bodhiyengalilek naikunna parishudal mava. The Holy Spirit convicting work as described in John 16, um, chapter verses 1 to 15, embodies a crucial aspect in, of his ministry, illuminating the truth about sin, righteousness, and judgment. Biblically, biblically, the Spirit's convicting work is foundational in leading individuals to a place of understanding their need for redemption. It, it is giving more importance to the, their need, our need for redemption. In John's Gospel, Jesus ex explains that the Spirit will convict the world of sin because people do not believe in Him. That we can see, that we can read in verse 9. This highlights that the root of sin not merely as an individual transgression, but fundamentally a rejection of Christ and His redemptive work. Sin is not merely an individual transgression, but a rejection of Christ and his redemptive work. Throughout the scripture, the Spirit's convicting work is emphasized. In Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, we can see that 
Peter's sermon pierces the hearts of listeners, leading them to a deep conviction of their sinful life. This conviction does not merely evoke a sense of guilt. This is not only evoking a sense of guilt, but saves us a pivotal moment prompting individuals to recognize their need for repentance and salvation. It, it um, gives importance for their need of uh, repentance and salvation. Practically, the Holy Spirit's convicting work prompts introspection in us, leading individuals to acknowledge their need for a savior and drawing attention to the discrepancy between one's actions and God's standard of righteousness. It serves as a catalyst for a repentance, a turning away from sin, and a turning towards God's redemptive grace. The second theme is the Holy Spirit that leads into the truth. The Holy Spirit that leads into the truth. Sagala satyatilekum varinadatana parishuddal mava. The Holy Spirit's guidance into truth as are outlined in this chapter is a foundational aspect of his ministry to the believers. This guidance encompasses the Spirit's role in revealing and illuminating the truth found in Jesus Christ. Biblically, Jesus promised the disciples that when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide them into, the, into all truth that we can see in verse 13. This assurance holds significant weight, especially in the context of Jesus' imminent departure. The disciples would, would require divine guidance to comprehend the depth of Christ's teaching and apply them effectively in their lives and ministry. Throughout this scripture, the Holy Spirit role in guiding believers in the truth is highlighted. In John's Gospel, Jesus refers to the Spirit as a helper or advocate, indicating the Spirit's function as a guide, counselor, and a source of divine wisdom. Moreover, in the book of Acts, the Spirit guides the early church directing them in matters of doctrine, evangelism, and mission. The Spirit's guidance led Peter to grasp the truth about God's inclusive salvation plan for Gentiles, challenging preconceived notions and expanding the understanding of God's truth that we can read in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Practically, the Spirit's guidance into truth involves a multifaceted process. It includes illuminating the scriptures and granting understanding and insight to the word, God's word. It entails unveiling the depth of Christ's teachings, leading believers into deeper relationship with God and a fuller comprehension of his purposes. Additionally, it entails an intimate relationship with God through prayer, seeking the Spirit's guidance and wisdom. Believers are called to walk in step with the Spirit, allowing His guidance to shape decisions, actions, and perspectives. Ultimately, the Spirit's guidance into truth serves as an invaluable resource for believers. It empowers them to navigate life's complexities, discern God's will, and embrace the transformative power of divine truth, leading to a life marked by spiritual maturity and conformity to Christ's likeness. The third theme is the spirit that leads to the renewal of whole creation. The spirit that leads to the renewal of whole creation. Sagala Srishtigalayim Pududakuna Parishuddal Mava. The Spirit's role here in renewing creation is a, is a profound bi biblical theme that encompasses both personal transformation and the broader restoration of the world. Biblically, 
द स्पिरिट्स रिन्यूम वर्क इज डिपिक्टेड थ्रू आउट द स्क्रिप्चर वी कैन सी इट इट इन थ्रू आउट द स्क्रिप्चर इन द बुक ऑफ जेनेसिस द स्पिरिट इज पोर्ट्रेड एज द ब्रेथ ऑफ गॉड दट ब्रिंग्स लाइफ इन टू क्रिएशन द प्रोफेट्स फ्रीक्वेंटली स्पीक ऑफ द स्पिरिट्स रोल इन रिन्यूविंग एंड रिस्टोरिंग आई से अ प्रोफेस इज अबाउट दट अबाउट अ टाइम वेन द स्पिरिट ऑफ द लॉर्ड विल ब्रिंग रिस्टोरेशन and transformation where desolate places will be revived and creation will be renewed furthermore the new testament emphasizes the spirit transformative work paul speaks of the spirit's renewal in the lives of believers highlighting how the spirit brings about personal transformation leading into a new creation the spirit's presence within believers initiates a process of inner renewal gradually conforming them to the image of christ moreover the spirit's work extends beyond individual renewal of to uh, individual renewal to the renewal of society and creation itself it describes creation eagerly waiting for its liberation from bondage anticipating a day when it will be set free from decay and brought into the glorious freedom of god's children practically the spirit's role in renewing creation invites all believers to be active participants in god's redemptive work it calls for a holistic work holistic approach to renewal engaging in acts of justice compassion and stewardship that contribute to the restoration of individuals communities and the environment responding to the spirit's role in renewing creation involves partnering with god in his mission of restoration it includes participating in activities that promote healing reconciliation and the alleviation of suffering it also involves caring for the environment and recognizing our responsibility as stewards of god's creation At ultimately the spirit's role in renewing the creation is a testament to god's ongoing work of restoration it invites believers to actively engage in god's redemptive mission embracing a vision for a renewed creation marked by justice peace and the flourishing of all aspects of life let me conclude pentecost is not an isolated incident but it is a continuation of god's redemptive narrative the spirit's creative breath inaugurated the creation and his ongoing work of renewal has been prophesied affirmed and experienced throughout the scripture this divine work encompasses not only personal transformation but also the liberation and restoration of a world that that is groaning for redemption practically the spirit role in renewing creation invites invites all of us to a participatory journey a journey marked by collaboration with god in his in his restorative mission it calls for an engagement in acts of compassion justice and stewardship that contributed that contribute to the broader renewal of individuals communities and environment this sermon journeying through pentecost and the holy spirit renewing work implores us to embrace the spirit's empowerment it calls us to be the vessels of renewal restoration in a world damaged by brokenness injustice and decay it challenges us to be the agents of change for healing and ambassadors of god's kingdom values in a world longing for renewal 
may this understanding of the holy spirit's renewing power not merely remain a theological concept but it how to ignite a passion within us a passion to actively participate in god's redemptive work fostering a world marked by justice compassion and flourishing for all as we depart from this time of reflection may the spirit's transformative renewal permit our lives communities and the entirety of creation amen let us meditate upon these words now i request one person to lead us in prayer our gracious loving heavenly father it's a great privilege to come into your presence 